We're just confirming how things stand there awaiting now the result of Levante against Athletic Bilbao, who are in action on Thursday. Well, let's welcome to the show, shall we? Frank LeBeuf and Julien Laurent with us. Jules, you've been wrong about Kuman all the time. He's a genius. <laughs> <laughs> he won. He's in the final of the Copa del Rey. It's a good start, I guess. Genius, I think that's pushing it. Uh, and I think today they benefited probably more even from the mistakes that Sevilla made, both tactically from Lopetegui and then during the game, the red card for Fernando, that clearance from Diego Carlos on the second goal. Why does he need to put the ball back in play like this towards Griezmann? I don't understand. And, the, and obviously the Ocampos penalty. Uh, but, but they also played with a lot of energy and a lot of intensity. Certainly in the first half, we saw Messi was possessed, Dembele with another really good goal. And, and overall, this is, this is good for them, for their confidence. We saw similar scenes, if you remember, in the quarter finals against Granada yeah. not that after that it was much better but certainly in terms of confidence and momentum going forward it's a really good it's a really good game and a really good win Frank how much did Barcelona win this and how much did Sevilla lose it well, 100% that Barcelona deserved to win and 100% Sevilla deserved to lose. <laughs> and they did everything, especially the last 15 minutes. I mean, you know, uh, even my wife was watching a movie next to me, you know. <laughs> and she said, why are you so upset? And I'm upset because Sevilla, I think, did everything to lose the game. And they insulted the gods of football the last 15 minutes. Basic rule, basic rule sorry, when you are... The guy who has been fouled on the, on the, on the 16 yard box, you'd never shoot the penalty. I already said that to Craig Burley once in, during that show, and uh, Ocampos did it and missed it. Then, after you have N. Niziri, uh, the number 15 of Sevilla, he had the ball like two minutes before uh, Barcelona equalized, and he didn't keep the ball. He tried something stupid and lost the ball. Then after you have that stupid red card and a stupid free kick. Then after the corner, you have stupid header from Diego Carlos who wants to kick the ball away, and Griezmann gave the ball back and gave it to uh, Pique. Then it's over. Then it's over. And, I, and I'm upset because it's not football. You did everything to lose that game, and you lost it. So well done, Barcelona. And my hat off to Sevilla for doing everything to lose that game. Stupid, Frank. It's very can much just, word of the day. Can I just say something? That is an old wives tale. What's this nonsense about the guy who's fouled should never take a penalty? Frank, Frank bangs on about this all the time. That's an old wives tale. That's all that. Why? Is. Yeah, it doesn't work anymore. Of course, <laughs> do it doesn't work why? anymore. Because You're there's, right, old, there's absolutely nothing to say or, or stats or anything to say that, oh, it's... it's it's, everybody knows it's proven that the person fouled shouldn't take it. What's a lot of nonsense? Frank, nonsense. Yeah, yeah, it's proven. It doesn't work anymore. He's right, you know. <laughs> we just have the, the evidence that uh, you shouldn't so, do that. So Ronaldo and I, I have said it so many box. times. So Ronaldo got fouled in the yeah, box, yeah, but he's and every time he he's... got fouled in the box, he shouldn't have taken the penalty. Yeah, you're talking about Ronaldo. I'm talking about oh, Ocampos. <laughs> so, so it's selective yeah. when and when it doesn't yeah. work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but yeah. I would say in general, you know, when you, you are you are fouled by somebody and you don't shoot the penalty because you're not psychologically ready to do it. And it's been proven many times. Go and on, you right. can watch the history of football on penalties to oh, maybe shit. see if I'm right or wrong. Oh, wait, don't be but silly. Well, that's what it, it's what I think. I know, I know. That's a scotchy thing to never be uh, okay with the others. That's Miss Craig Burley and Steve Nichols' uh, kind of way to, to live their lives. <laughs> Frank, you're quite feisty today. Was it because your wife was watching a movie that you weren't in? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no, no, no. And she, she, she doesn't really, really appreciate soccer. So, no, no, it's just that, you know what? I love football, and I think Barcelona made me think that uh, it was they did everything uh, to, to, to please me because they were playing the way I want them to play, uh, to react and to, uh, and to go back after the, uh, uh, a dreadful uh, first leg. But when I see Sevilla playing and I say, wow, it's like they have no experience, like they're completely lost, that they don't know what they do, where you have experienced players, you, you should know what to do. And I think the, way that, the fact that Rakitic was on the field helped them to, feel, to be a little bit better in the second half. But the last 15 minutes, you do everything to be kicked out. And that's completely insane. Uh, the, and you have nobody to react on the field. Say, so guys, guys, you know, just, 
Just think, keep the ball, stay quiet. You know, we're going to sort it out. But they, one after the other, they do crazy mistakes. And, what would and be that's why I'm just a little bit upset. And what would be more frustrating as well, Jules, from a severe point of view, is that they didn't seem to learn any lessons from the weekend, where, of course, they lost to Barcelona. Exactly, we, and, and we talked about it a bit on Monday show, didn't we? We said it would be exactly the same Barcelona team. So if you're Sevilla and if you're Lopetegui, you adapt your, maybe your formation even, or certainly the way you're going to play. And what did they do? They just sat back so much from the first minute. That's all they did, just sat back and, and tried to defend that 2-0 that lead instead of having a goal like we saw a bit more in the second half, which clearly, Barca, we, we know how defensively they make mistakes, and we saw that with the Mingesa penalty on, on a compost in the second half and yet they only defended and and like Steve like St Stevie said earlier as well you don't close down Dembele he scores a goal you keep making those mistakes it's going to come back to haunt you and clearly they didn't learn anything from that defeat where they were completely outplayed at the weekend against Barcelona a very similar Barcelona side not just with the, the starting 11 but also the way they played and I think it's a huge opportunity missed and again showing that Lopetegui if he's been great for most of the season certainly in the last two games against Barcelona showed his limits Big time. You know, the most disappointing thing from, from Sevilla's point of view is that all they had to do was do the basics and they would win this game or certainly win the tie overall, being 2 0 up. And sometimes, sometimes you can accept something incredible happening when you've had a two or three goal lead and you lose the game and you say, you know what, the other team were either brilliant or that was an incredible goal. Mm. The fact is, everything that went wrong was all down to severe yeah. because they just didn't do basic things correctly. So you don't even need to re as a coach, you don't even need to rewatch this game. It's, it's completely in your brain. You know exactly how you lost it. And for Lobategi, as experienced as he is, that's that's down for me. That's down to him. Jules, as you mentioned, we weren't surprised the starting eleven. No Griezmann. It was the Dembélé up top with Messi, as it was at the weekend. But even with that formation, he had to change things around to try and push the game, which makes you still question as to whether or not he knows really what his best team is. Well, yeah, certainly, that's, that's, that's a good point. And also, I think, because Sevilla sat so deep, there was a point where Dembele uh, could not run in behind like he did in, in, in the league game, for example, at the weekend, which you take away a lot of his strength, so you had to change something. And to be fair, I thought he was going to change at half-time. I thought he should have changed at half-time instead of waiting a bit more in the second half. But, but, but certainly, when Griezmann came on and, and Breathwaite after that, it, it changed a few things. They, they, had, they were, obviously, they had more talent going going forward and, and offensively to put pressure on that Sevilla defence and we saw Jules Koundé and, and Diego Carlos again not having a great game because they were under pressure so much, there were Barca players everywhere pretty much uh, and, and also the bad news I guess is the PK injury, we'll have to wait and see what happened really with his knee toward the end of the game but he looked in a lot of pain even after they celebrated that qualification and the win so but, but overall as good as the start was and the starting 11 and that formation and again we talked about at the weekend too, uh, this is not, the Barca can't play with that formation every single game. It's not going to work for most of La Liga game, for example, or even against PSG in the Champions League next week in the, in the, in the second leg. Frank? Yeah, I agree. And I think uh, Kuman made a mistake, you know, after an hour because uh, it was working well, you know, to play the way they play tactically, three at the back. And suddenly it seems to change, you know, where some players came on and uh, he substituted some, some others, where he came back to a formation of four, almost, where we all know it didn't work. So I didn't know what he was doing. I was uh, wondering, you know, what he want, where he wanted to go, where something was working, and he changed it, and we saw, in fact, Sevilla getting a little bit more forward and being better than before. But is it because of Sevilla? I don't think so. It's more because of Barcelona players wondering what they had to do. And that's the thing. And don't forget that at 10 against 11, I didn't see the difference. And we even saw um, Sevilla pushing forward and being dangerous. Uh, where in, in some other years, you know, before, uh, 11 against 10, Barcelona will have killed everybody. And it would have been like three or four more goals. And they, they put themselves in danger being one man more than the other. So, Still some question mark. They're not very solid, I would say. 
Uh, final point on this, Jules. How significant is this for Barca's season that they managed to avoid defeat today and book a place in the final? It's huge. I think it's huge psychologically. Uh, it's huge going forward. We, we know the elections are taking place on, on Sunday night. There will be a new president come Monday. Regardless of what happens to, to Ronald Koeman, if he can win something this season, albeit the Copa del Rey, I think that would almost save him, regardless of where they finish in the league, what happened in the Champions League, because the, the two long shots. Mm. But at least if he can win the Copa del Rey, this is not a blank season. They win something, and then the new president and whoever is managing next season, whether that's Xavi or Kuman again or someone else, at least the rebuild will start with the Copa del Rey and something to, to almost build on and take this team forward because I think a blank season would be an absolute disaster for, for Barcelona. It's not done and we saw Athletic Bilbao, if it's them qualifying for the, yeah. for the final against Barca, we saw in the Super Cup that they beat them in the final. So it would not be already won, but certainly having that chance, that shot of winning something is huge psychologically for Kuman and for the players. Well, just a reminder why it's a long shot in La Liga. Barcelona currently sitting second. They are five points adrift for Atleti with a game in hand. Uh, what a game it's going to be on Sunday. It's not Barcelona, but it's Atletico Madrid against Real Madrid. Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. And for more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for premium content and live streaming, subscribe to ESPN+.